Hi there everyone, hope you're well. Uh, I just want to talk now a little bit in this video about race timing and uh, in particular race timing hardware. So if you have ever wondered how does a timing chip work um, and what are the different types? Well, timing chips work on RFID uh, systems, which means radio frequency identification. Now, radio frequency, that just means the radio part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So yeah, tags are receiving and transmitting radio signals to the antennas, to the transceivers uh, that then pick up the signal as you run through a checkpoint or run through the finish line, for instance. And yeah, that's sent off to the software decoded and processed and yeah, results lists or split times are produced. So what are the different types then of RFID systems? Well, there are two main types and those two types are called active and passive. Let's start with the active. The active systems, those are the ones where you see, yeah, maybe a bit more of a chunky tag. Uh, you have to strap it on with a with a strap, Velcro strap often to your ankle or to your wrist. Um, and these systems are battery operated. So the active system is actively sending out a signal um, from the tag itself. And that is being picked up um, by the transceiver uh, or the antenna um, and is then, yeah, being processed and taken to the software. Uh, the passive system though, that's a bit, little bit more special. These are the systems where they're ultra thin tags, often you're tying them onto your shoelace, perhaps at just a few millimeters in thickness, or they're embedded into a number bib. And these are systems whereby they receive a signal from a transceiver, for instance, um, as they're crossing through a checkpoint and the signal itself is ultra high, uh, it, it has energy basically um, and the energy is used by the chip uh, to switch on the chip so it uses the electromagnetic um, energy within the signal to make a little magnetic field and then this switches on the chip creates the circuit to send a predetermined but different signal back to the um, transceiver, which then picks up that signal, obviously, and registers that you have been through the checkpoint or the finish line. And so these are the two different ways, two different types of chip that can be used. Obviously, each has its pros and cons, and each are used for different types of races, different types of events, you know, if you've got muddy trail events or even OCR events and you've got obstacles or you've got other people, you've got water, uh, swim races, all these different types of races require, have, have different constraints and different problems associated with them when it comes to using chip timing. So obviously, you need to choose carefully, but thankfully, and I won't go into it here, but we've written a number of articles on how to choose the best timing for your race. Just go to organizer.raceid.com and you will find loads of great articles, loads of great content about how to choose between timing apps or chip timing, for instance, and how to choose the appropriate chip timing for yourself, as well as an A to Z of companies providing hardware and software on the market so that you can have a look, have a browse, compare between them all. And uh, yeah, hopefully all your race timing questions will be answered there. All right, that's enough for me for now, but I'll see you next time. And in the meantime, time some great races. See you.